<laughs> How are you? Hello. <laughs> wow. So many happy faces. What's wrong with you? It's early in the morning. You're supposed to be the nerds who don't like to get up in the morning. <laughs> it's absolutely great to be here. And uh, I'm going to talk about the topic that uh, is personal, is very important, and I will share with you some of the things that I had to endure, and how it changed my outlook to life. Just uh, if you Google me or whatever, you probably see some of the names of my big companies, uh, three multi-billion dollar IPOs, all of that stuff. But in reality, I had 10 companies, and three of them failed. And I got fired twice. You know, the first company, we sold it for 75 million when I was new and 30 years old. And uh, this was 1984, you know, imagine. God, <laughs> so long ago, I'm uh, dating myself, aging. Uh, second one became a multi-billion dollar company, Cirrus Logic. And then you think you're on top of the world and you can't do anything wrong. Uh, you know, in those days, in the... 70s, 80s, 20-some-year-olds uh, were not that common to go and start companies, and especially the ones who were not white, uh, six foot tall, handsome, you know, if you are a short, bald, uh, hairy, <laughs> you know, fat type of a guy from, of all the countries in the world, Iran, you know, it's uh, not exactly the best time to start a company or try to go <laughs> and do something right after hostage crisis. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but despite all of those things, uh, successes came and uh, great things happened, so I start to believe that I'm great, I can do amazing stuff, and uh, that pride, that hubris gets you to do a little bit of crazy things. One of them was, uh, I had this idea for a pad that you could uh, use a pen or a finger and uh, touch it and uh, go and communicate with everybody else. And uh, in those days, we didn't have internet, we didn't have uh, wireless connectivity. But uh, the idea had come to me through a crazy dream that I was reading Wall Street Journal. This was 1989. And on the first page, there was an article about automotive industry. And there was an ad by Honda, the Japanese car manufacturer. And in my dream, I went and I touched that. And it became live color video. So I woke up and I said, I'm going to go and make this thing an iPad 18 years ahead of its time. And by this time, many of the VCs, many of the skeptic investors had given up on trying to figure me out. When I would say I start a company, money would come in because I'd made them so much money. So 40 million bucks, rather quickly comes. I hired some of the best names, the biggest things in there, and you're growing like this. And you think you are the God's greatest gift to the humanity, you know. And guess what? Our game plan was we showed our samples and we got $300 million worth of orders. We were on the cover of 20 magazines. Check out Momento Computer, it was called. It looks like an iPad with one difference. It didn't have any buttons. The iPhone 10 finally was designed with user interface with no buttons. And everybody was saying it's the future of computing. Well, I cut back the $300 million projections to $100 million. So, oh a modest first year revenue of 100 million. And first quarter, we shipped about 5,000 units 
those days the price was very high, $5,000 roughly. So $25 million, first quarter done. Wow, sounds great. Bang, second quarter, everything is coming back. People say the device doesn't work. If you don't have any buttons, how do you turn it on? <laughs> Just look at how many hundreds of millions of dollars Apple spent to teach people to use their finger to touch the screen. And if you don't do that, the device is dead. So things are coming back. There were bugs. There were issues. It was April 1st. 1992, I went to work, and I see there is a board meeting there. I had hired COO of Apple to be my chief operating officer, and he had talked to the board and said he should be the CEO. Cameron is not delivering. Investors are unhappy, the board is unhappy, and you walk in there with all your pride and glory and hubris, and you find out that they tell you, you're fired. I thought it was April Fool's Day joke. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I said, I have made you guys billions of dollars. How could you fire me? I'm the soul of the company. I'm the founder. This bank, bank, all that nonsense. And they say, go. Talk about failure. Talk about screw up. So it's like losing your baby. It's like losing the most dear loved one. It's your company. Anybody who tells you failure is great. It is? <laughs> Holy shit, it really hurts. Next day, you get up. What's the first phase after you have had a huge loss? Denial. Thank you. Let me ask you, how many of you have failed? How many of you have been fired? OK. So you know what I'm talking about. It's shitty feeling. It didn't happen to me, denial. What do you do? I got up, picked up my briefcase, and my wife says, where the hell are you going? I said, I'm going to work. She says, you were fired yesterday. I said, no, 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 they probably didn't mean it. They really want me back. This is uh, OK, come on. Thank God she stopped me. It would have been very embarrassing to show up at work and probably be arrested or whatever. As, you, as Omarosa was, I guess, reported that when she was fired, she wouldn't leave the White House or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so you really deny it? It couldn't have happened to me. This is really, really bad thing. I'm great. These guys don't know it, they will change their mind. None of that happens. You just have been fired. After so many hours, days, weeks of denial, at some point, you go to the next phase. And you say, I'm angry. I was great. I was a victim. These guys ganged up on me. There is deep state coming and trying to fire me. <laughs> and you feel a victim, like a victim. And you refuse to look at reality. After a few more hours, days, weeks, hopefully not months, you wake up and you say, God, maybe they are right. Maybe I didn't do such a good job. Maybe I should accept it. I failed. After all, I brought all these people. 
I hired all these people. If we didn't execute, if we misread the market, if we developed the wrong product, if we shipped too many of our computers without really doing enough of prototyping, beta, feedback, to learn. Had we shipped only 100 and talked to some people, we were thinking we are the best, the smartest, the greatest, and we should keep everything wrapped up and surprise the whole world with our wonderful invention. That's all nonsense. The soonest you could go and talk and expose your idea, your product to the market, the fewer mistakes you could make. And every mistake is something to be celebrated because it avoids a bigger mistake. Learn from it and reduce that. Anyway, coming back to my story, after I accepted it, if you are man enough to admit that you are a human being and learn from your sisters, that it is okay to cry. It takes a very powerful person to learn that it's okay to cry. Women have been blessed with that. I wish I had come to terms with that sooner before having to go through such a tremendous loss. But tell you what, you macho guys, if you just start crying a little bit <laughs> and learn, it feels good, releases a lot of toxins. It's okay to admit failure. Don't be stupid asshole who goes and says, I'm macho, I never make mistakes. You started the company, it's your fault, accept it. And that's the beginning of your growth. That's where you say, what did I do wrong? How can I learn from it? And how I could go to the next elevated stage of living? Because I've experienced pain. I've experienced what happens when you don't deliver. And there is a profound love of universe that's given to you, those of us who are blessed with the fact that we go through that pain, our ideas, our outlook to life changes. So what happened to me? I was confused. I accepted that I had done things wrong, but I lost my confidence, and I didn't know what to do. Many of us start a company because we like to be Famous, we like to make a lot of money. We like to be our own boss. We like to leave our signature, our legacy. Well, I had done all of that in my 20s and early 30s. None of that was meaningful. Where do you go next? Aborigines in Australia have a thing called walkabout. If you are not happy, you go for a walkabout, and you don't come back till you have peace with yourself. So I did a walkabout. It was kind of flyabout a little bit. <laughs> Traveled all over the world, and in every place that I went, in the next 12, 13 months, I learned new cultures, I studied new ways of living, learned about new religions, new languages. And what was astonishing was how similar we really are. All this bullshit nonsense about I'm Iranian, I'm American, I'm Mexican, I'm Japanese, I'm Chinese, I'm Israeli, I'm Palestinian, I'm Arab, whatever. It's all nonsense, bullshit. 
You go up to space, uh, space station and you look down. Do you see borders on the line? Really? It's all one. What the hell is all this nonsense? And every place I went, they said they were the best. They were better than their neighbors. It was genetically stronger. You know, when I was raised in Iran, and we thought Persians are the best. We are better than Indians, Pakistanis, Arabs, everybody, all the neighbors around. And you believe that bullshit till you go and meet the first Indian guy who is smarter than you. You meet the first Arab who looks better than you. And you say, holy shit, what's wrong with this theory? Especially if you look like me, everybody looks better than you. And if you're as dumb as I am, everybody is smarter than you. So you say, what is wrong with this theory? And then about religion. You go and talk to this group of people versus this group versus this group. Every one of them tell you, we are the only true religion in the world. And we are going to go to heaven. Everybody else is damned to hell. I always ask those people a question. How many people did your God create? Seven billion? How many of you are going to go to heaven? 100 million? 500 million? A billion? Your God would not make it as my VP of manufacturing with such a high failure rate. I mean, think about it. <laughs> and trust me, at times I've had pretty lousy VPs of manufacturing who couldn't make their things. But that God is even worse than the worst. Failure rate of 70%, 80%. Think about that. So I said, maybe there is another way to live my life. Maybe I should go and create technologies that bring all of us together. Maybe I should go and spend my time and energy on creating global companies that bring people from different races, different religions, to come and work together, make money together, and become friends. And the most important part, I changed. I said, why do I need all this money? When we sold our first company, CAE Systems, we bought a nice four-bedroom home on top of a hill in Los Altos, very nice place. Not a mansion, not a palace, not 20 rooms, a four-bedroom, but looked nice, good. That's enough. I bought a Ferrari. <laughs> Why not? But the rest, what do you do with it? Give it away. Go and do something good. Happiness is not having 20 Ferraris, is not having a private plane. It's one of the loneliest, most bullshit experiences, travel alone. I have lots of billionaire friends. I refuse to go with them on their goddamn private plane. <laughs> I prefer, you know, if you have money, go business class, go first class. You don't need your own plane. I love interacting with other passengers. There's more space, better food. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need a goddamn yacht? You use it once, one week every year, maybe two weeks. Just rent one. <laughs> when you need it. When you think different, your life changes. And you start to do things that matter. And you start to go to conferences like this. You have the freedom to talk to people like you guys. We are together. We are the team that is going to change the world for the better. And the fact that we come from so many different 
religions, races, countries, background, and working together, learning and teaching each other, learning from each other, says that we are on the right path. Our world is going to be united through the use of technology and techniques of high-tech entrepreneurship. And we will do things in a very different way that our whole planet is going to succeed. It's not America first, Japan first, France first, Germany first, Mexico first. It's humanity first. Thank you and love you all. Thanks. Thanks. Love you. <laughs>